Hello and welcome. I'd like to start by giving you a taste of what's coming up in our small group videos for May. It probably won't surprise you that since this week is the National Day of Prayer, today's session will be about prayer. Next week, we'll learn about waiting and trusting in the Lord, and the week after that, we'll talk about walking in the Spirit. The latter two topics will be put into the context of the Feast of Pentecost, which is on the 24th. For the last few years, we've observed the National Day of Prayer by examining a different element of the Lord's Prayer. This year, we're going to focus on Matthew 6, verse 10, where Jesus prays, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray these words, we profess that we believe in God and in the concept of heaven, not its location, but rather any place where God's will is fulfilled. In realizing that God's will can be fulfilled anywhere, we get a glimpse of what it would be like to have a heaven on earth. Living in God's kingdom and doing his will must be something we strive to do every day. Heaven isn't just an abstract idea that we look forward to in the future, but it's an environment we create and endeavor to bring to earth. If we live like Christ and we claim the Lord's Prayer as a mandate for daily living, the kingdom already begins here. Those around us should be able to look at how God's people treat one another and see what heaven is really like. This representation of heaven should be so attractive that they want to share in it. Let us consider living in this way so that others are able to see the kingdom in us. So how do we use Jesus' prayer as our guide? Your kingdom come, your will be done is such a, a small, simple phrase to say. But doing his will can be really difficult. How does one actually live their life this way? Maybe we can break it down into three steps. Step one is to know the will of God. What does God want me to do? In Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, we read, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As we pray to our Father in heaven, let's ask that we become more familiar with his ways and thoughts. When we do, we're able to see things more from God's perspective. Our chief apostle described God's will as the universal will to save. He loves us. He wants to save us and offers us a pathway in life that leads us back to him. Apostle Paul said it so clearly in Thessalonians, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. The next step is to embrace the will of God. He loves us and has given us the freedom to love him in return, to trust him and to serve him. Of our own free will, we may choose to walk on his pathway to eternal life. In essence, we do not give up our will, rather we decide to make God's will our own. This decision can be joyous and passionate. But every decision in life has a cost. Part of the cost is what we give up. When we choose God's pathway, we give up all the other pathways that are available to us. Part of the cost is accepting the struggle of the pathway itself. This can include self-denial, sacrifice, and moments of suffering or disappointment. But out of love for God, and to attain the prize of eternal life, we are willing to pay this price. Jesus' life is the perfect example of these three steps. He understood his Father's love for fallen mankind and his desire to save us. He willingly chose to be the outlet for God's love and the means for our salvation. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus the man struggle with the price of his decision to do God's will. He prayed, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. As the writer of Hebrews puts it, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Like Christ, we may ask God to make our path easier, 
but our chief prayer is for the grace and strength to bear it. No matter what, we want to embrace the mission God has given us. Jesus lived his life in loving obedience to his Father's will, and he wants us to do the same. Loving God doesn't always mean that we like his plan for us. It does mean that we choose to accept it.